Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, Griffin here with FilmSpeak and I'm working on a couple videos, um, so that's why you're not getting this in the proper quality that I usually would give you. Um, and I am putting together a little round table interview I did with um, legendary composer Michael Giacchino, uh, who of course, as you all know, scored the uh, latest Spider-Man films, Spider-Man Far From Home, Spider-Man Homecoming, the Planet of the Apes trilogy, um, The Incredibles, uh, Star Trek, so on and so forth. Uh, the guy is incredible, and during San Diego Comic-Con, uh, Brody and I had a chance to speak with him, and so while it's not the best quality audio-wise, because there are a bunch of people in the room, and uh, there were a few other uh, reporters who got to ask him questions. Um, I did want to just give you all this interview regardless um, because it was a lot of fun for Brody and I to chat with uh, Michael Giacchino. He was really kind um, and he gave us some great answers about uh, Mysterio's theme in the film. So this is kind of going to be a little bit of a bonus episode for The Fourth Wall. It's not a proper episode. It's a little bit to kind of tide you over uh, before my interview with David Leach. So Hope you all enjoy it. Uh, here is our brief conversation with composer Michael Giacchino. Did you rub my land? Thousand generations to the now. Here we go. My first question for you is creating the theme of Mysterio. Yes, it is. It is an incredible theme because it's so versatile and you know you can mash it with the Spider-Man theme, the heroic moments, mm -hmm. but also you can flip a switch and it immediately turns like sinister. Yeah. What, so I'm just curious, like when you have a character like Mysterio, mm -hmm. um, what was sort of your, your process for creating a, a theme that is so versatile? Well, in the telling of the story, Mysterio is revealed to us as a, someone who's going to help. He's a good guy, you know? And, and so I wanted to create something that would reflect that honestly you know and feel really real but then with a couple of really minor changes I could then also twist it into something that oh is diabolical and you start feeling like okay this guy is not being honest with me you know and that was that was tricky but it was I think Jake was so good in that movie you know one of the things I try to do when I watch a movie I really track how I feel when I'm watching that movie I track how I feel and I don't think about any of these as super hero movies I don't think about them as super villains I don't think I just think about them as people you know because I can't relate what it's like to be Mysterio I don't know what that's like I can't be Spider-Man who knows what that's like I don't know but I do know what it's like to have a crush on someone and, and try to wonder how can I tell them about that I do know what it's like to struggle through high school I do know what it's like to kind of be working really hard at something and it doesn't work out and it's frustrating in terms of how Mysterio's character came about you know so all of those are the things that I zero in on and go what would that feel like for me you know and, and what are the times in my life when I've had similar experiences and I feel like if I do that then the audience can connect as well because no audience none of us can understand what it's like to all that crazy stuff yeah, yeah. it's fun to watch but we have to first understand the underlying motivations of every character and the emotions that go along with that and if we do that then we can do whatever we want with all the crazy stuff you know because as long as you understand who these people are as characters we can relate to that all bets are off for everything else <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm coming to another superhero product that you uh, worked on, which is The Incredibles. Yeah. Um, the first one and the second one. And uh, those ones are obviously sort of set in this weird 50s, 60s kind of yeah. specified amount. And in that, there's a lot of like your jazz influence. And particularly, we've noticed um, sort of a John Barry, yeah. James Bond sound. Yeah. Um, so we're just wondering whether or not that was a, uh, a purposeful inspiration or if it just sort of working in that time frame and just sort of ended up sounding. Yeah, I think you know Brad when he was growing up. He didn't. There weren't a lot. There weren't any superhero movies, and the closest you had to a superhero movie was a James Bond movie. You know, and he he said, "Is there any way we can make a superhero score that feels like it came from that era of filmmaking?" So you know, for me, it was about looking at so many of my heroes 
composers like Henry Mancini, who you know is amazing, Hoyt Curtin, who did you know Johnny Quest and tons of Hanna Barbera stuff. Uh, of course, John Barry. You know, uh, these are the guys that I really wanted to go to and just get the essence of of that era. You know, and then mash it all together into something for the superhero world. Um, so it was a weird, weird experiment, but it was really fun to do, and it was you know I had a blast. But that's that's where that all came from. From Brad, you know, growing up watching these films, considering them his superhero movies. Yeah. They really like me. Yeah. No, it's it's really fun. <laughs> it was actually fun watching when they had. I don't know if you were at the panel with us, but the clip when they were showing all my stuff against the Frozone's theme. Yeah. It was fun to see like Doctor Strange and Spider all those against that music. I just thought, oh, that's interesting. That kind of works. Well, I'm curious about those because you you basically on top of like doing the score, you went in and then you also created like. These, these television serial themes. Yes, or, yes, okay. yeah. I wonder if we could talk about that. Or... Yeah, well, Brad was like, look, there's a part where the characters meet and one of the uh, Dever says to one of them, I I know all your themes and, you know, like, oh, exactly. you, you have to understand well, or believe that they live in a world where, yeah, these superheroes would have had television shows made out, made, you know, for them. They would have had animated series made about them, all of that. And if that's the case, what would have been those themes? You know, what would have been those jingles, whatever it was that, that would have... Uh, and so they were the, like one of the first things I actually wrote for the film oh, wow. because they had to animate the characters singing the themes, you know, like, you know, when he would say it. So those are the first. And we went and recorded those very early. Um, but again, that was just me reaching back to like, oh, what kind of stuff that I love as a kid growing up, you know, the jingles and the great, so much great music that came out of the uh, 70s as well. Um, you know. It's funny, even at the panel, you mentioned like watching Super Friends. And yeah. Feel like Super Friends. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So much of what you hear is out of just, I pull from my, you know, everything I experienced growing up, everything I loved growing up. I mean, I grew up with all of these sort of, if you were to ask me as a kid, what kind of movies would you like to work on when you grew up? It would literally be every single movie that I've worked on. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, it, just, it seems like, you know, you literally have gotten like each dream project. Yes. I mean, my God, Star Trek, you know, Jurassic Park. Yes, uh, I know. Star, Star Wars, Wars like said, and then Planet of the Apes. And yeah. Then, yeah, I know. It, it, it's I've been very lucky to work on them and I love them so much and I have such a huge emotional connection to them all, which is why it's really fun fun to do. It's fun to do. Yeah, you couldn't tell us what the best one was the most satisfying or fulfilling was at maybe the role time. Can you do that? Uh, projects? You know, yeah, I... Honestly, you're not necessarily the best or maybe just something that felt so satisfying. I enjoy all of the things I work on because I choose them very carefully and I choose... I am very careful with the people I work with and the projects I choose. I have to like the people and I have to have some some con emotional connection to the project or else I just say no because um, it's very difficult to write music for me if I'm not feeling anything um, so having said that I have really enjoyed all of them but I think there's something special about Lost that I really loved working on Lost I think that you know that because that was over an extended period of time I made so many great friends on that show and uh, and it's just a real sort of emotional thing to look back on that one. so I think that one probably you know but they're all they're all fun they're all great they're all like it's like you can look back on all these adventures you had with your friends in the same way when you were growing up you had a lot of fun with friends and it's, 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 I feel like a lot of the work I do feels like that sort of jumping back into Spider-Man I'm curious because you know something I, I, don't, I don't know if you've necessarily said this but I heard it from some of friends like with each iteration of the character you wanted to progress in the theme that showed like Peter maturing yes um, I'm just curious yeah like, because I really noticed that in, in the first I'm movie yeah. well in Homecoming the yeah. first movie it's bum 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 but it's very straight yeah you know um, and, and then as he grows and matures and sort of takes on the, the mantle of the hero he's getting more comfortable with it yeah. it sort of becomes bum 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 yeah. it's a little bit more bravado to it so little changes like that can make a huge emotional difference yeah. when you're listening or watching the film so it was fun to sort of and it was hard to sort of hold back from doing that on the first one yeah. you know uh, and keep it straight and hope that the film did well enough that we could make another one and we could do that so yeah and and it, but it made me think okay well then what happens in the third one what do you do with there I don't know yeah, uh, I, have, I don't know who knows we'll see if that ever comes about we'll figure it out I'm sure yeah. Spider-Man 3 is about yeah but it is I think it's fun to track that that emotional growth of the character you know and it's important 